Uh, this body here, guys, that was chopped out with a hatchet. And uh, then I used a spoke shave to help round it off a little bit. The head, I didn't chop out with a hatchet, but I used that body for the kids at Game Fair to file on. And uh, this is basically, it'll be the same kind of body here. That's a buffle head. <clears throat> uh, that is the uh, first one I ever fully chopped out with a hatchet, but uh, as with everything guys, it, it's all about sharpness. And I've seen one guy that everything he chopped out was uh, with a hatchet, and it's a guy from the East Coast. Uh, Denny, Denny, Dave, and I saw it at Chicago, and the guy used a really thin hatchet. And I, I didn't buy one yet, but I've seen it. This isn't too far off, but uh, usually they're they're pretty thin. A little bit of weight on it in the back, and it's all about sharpness to to get through the wood. And hatcheting is basically just to rough it out. You're just getting a shape. And uh, then we'll use a file or spoke shave on, uh, on it the rest of the way. Uh, this is the only thing I had to chop on. That is a log of walnut. I did, uh, I just marked, I've got a shape on the bottom of this. And uh, knots aren't good, but that one's not too thick there. And I, I think I've come to find out that uh, a little bit of distance on the front of the breast would be better to have a little more wood on the front end. Uh, you're able to get it rounded off easier than short like this. But if you don't have a bandsaw, a hatchet is actually really quick and pretty easy. I don't. Okay. No. Uh, this is strictly if a person doesn't have a bandsaw, they can use a hatchet, a uh, draw knife. I'll show that one. How to use a draw knife. And it's actually pretty easy. I, uh, I did, when I started, I made them like Marv with uh, uh, gouges and whatnot. But it's actually too tough on my hand. And actually, this is tough on my hand. <clears throat> Chopping, uh, a lot of trowel work. I was telling some of the guys, um, Lem and Steve Ward on the East Coast, uh, Lem used a hatchet to chop 30,000 decoys out. That's all he used. His brother finished them off. He just chopped them out and kept going. This is a chunk of white cedar.
the old knots are pretty stiff. In fact, uh, on that swan, I was going to tell you when I made that, I started out with a draw knife on that, that draw knife on that swan, which is 50 year old red cedar, had some knots, are hard as steel. It actually bent and chipped my draw knife, so I quit. Denny suggested that I took an angle grinder to it with a flap sander <coughs> and uh, shaped it all down. Dusty as all get out, but it's shaped it down. That's what's nice about this. You have some chips, but it's not dusty. kind of got the shape, the tail there. That knot is causing some problems. It's a little bigger on the inside than I thought. Maybe you can hear it when I hit it. Not in the tail.
Phil, I'm afraid I'm going to call you tomorrow and you won't be able to use your hand. <laughs> Next to Murph. Yeah, we, he's only a huge chip guy making a rear head. Well, it's kind of chopped. Well, it's not too bad. Like I say, having a little extra wood on the front end by the breast helps get it rounded easier. I basically had my breast right up to the front of that, and I went, oh boy, that's going to cause trouble. It's a little tougher to get rounded there. That's a roundabout. Um, I would use the uh, file and the uh, spoke shave on top of that, but I'm gonna, this is all set up. We'll go with that for the time being. Uh, I like to use, uh, I've used a rasp since I started, um, but a rasp, really, if this was locked in the vise, it really takes wood away quick. And I will get that on there if we have time. Uh, draw knife, you know, if anyone has, uh, I'll have some of you guys can come up here and do this. This is uh, my set, this is what I use at home.
it's even starting to look like marble. <laughs> <laughs> This one, I did, I drew the uh, shape on the bottom and on the top, uh, give you a little more idea on it. Um, if you don't have a, uh, if you don't have a bandsaw, you can do this way. It is nice to have a vise. <laughs> Uh oh. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Band saws are definitely nice to have, guys, if you don't have it. I started out with a pretty cheap one and you could only get four inches, I think, on it. Anybody want to come up and try doing a draw knife?
you guys get the idea. <laughs> Buy a bandsaw. Like I say, I use files, and this is just a uh, bastard file. You can see it, it takes away quite a bit pretty quick. Um, spoke shaves. They did this. This is everything in the old days. This is how they did it. They took their shapes down just like this. Yeah, this is for taking off the rough edges. Or if you've got to take down a little a bit in one area type of deal. Uh, that swan is actually finished with a spoke shave. You'll be able to see the marks on it. And this is, this is the way they did it in the old days. They'd spoke shave it and then they'd probably file it off. They didn't have sandpaper way back. But this is a slow go compared to the draw knife. So it's definitely just for finish work. Do you prefer using hand tools as opposed to power? Well, I did when I started. I used all hand tools, but I had to change because it was too tough on my hand. It's all power now. Other than files, I do use files. And I will take a draw knife on, or not, a uh, spoke shave and just to put a finish on there when I make an antique style like that. Uh, but yeah, I've got hand problems, so I've kind of had to get away from gouges. Everything pushes too much. Uh, most of you guys have probably never seen Marv. Uh, Marv Meyer, who was in the club, he would, uh, he'd bandsaw out a decoy, about like that, all shaped down. He would shape it out with a gouge within five, ten minutes. He'd be done. All just like this. Again, the old days, that's the only tools they had, so. Um, anything else you guys want to see here? <laughs> um, I mean, I could put this in the vise and, and round it off. You guys want to see that? Well, you're not going to be able to use your hands tomorrow. Remember, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm... <laughs> These uh, bastards and, and this. Yeah. Well, it's like this here. That yeah. takes it away yeah. real quick. So imagine it being about that wide. Yeah. <laughs> really bites in. It'll chew it up. Ripping in your arsenal. Yeah. Whoop.
that they do have an internet. Uh, the writer who did that article, he talked to Frank, and uh, Frank gave him a few names, and he was talking, he was going to come to the club meeting tonight, or next month, and it's all a, it's a maybe. Uh, that's when he talked to me, and then when I talked to him on the phone, after that, uh, I got the idea that, the impression that he wasn't going to come. <laughs> He just wanted to get the one article, and I tried to talk him into doing something on the club, but maybe later. Yeah. Well, the article he did on you was very good, I thought. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned the club, and... Uh, Hopefully he'll do another something sometime. Yeah, yep. I got his phone number, I'll talk with him yet. And uh, I got the impression it was kind of a last minute thing his editor gave him. Get an article on decoys, quick. Yeah. You can see uh, the shape the shape changes real quick, guys. You do have to put a little muscle into it, but uh, it changes quick. Um, I like these antique spoke shaves. Can't get them cheap. I've never been able to get a new one to work good, but uh, these work real nice for me. But not to a problem. Any questions on anything, guys? Anyone want to try this? Spoke shaves? Yep, you got to knock these out, push it out this way, and you got to tap them carefully. You've got to go both sides, a little bit on each side, and then pull it out. Um, but what I do, I just uh, clamp it in the vise, and I've got a diamond stone that I rub on it. Um, I haven't been able to hold it in my hand or do anything else. No, no, you want to try this? Come on up guys, try it out. But yeah, you gotta do everything. You can't do it straight on. You gotta slice it, basically, is what I've come to find out on everything. And that's what Marv does with his gouges, too. It's all a twist slice. Is that an older one? Is this is a probably 1800, 19, early 1900, yeah. yeah. After this, they came out with a brass fitting that uh,
Yeah. And that's uh, it's like it might be maple, but a lot of these uh, are made in England. And uh, I'm cut. Uh, Marv told me that it's bone wood. They call it bone wood. go to the front on that one. There you go. It's about halfway through the bird, guys. You got to go one direction, halfway the other way. This just bought, uh, yeah, this one. I just bought this one this weekend. A little bit smaller, but... Will you just take and sign at one side, or you do pop them out? Of I do pop it out okay. and, and uh, diamond stone it. Okay. Hmm. Oh, thanks. Any, what else do I got here? That's about it, I guess, guys. Close her up. <laughs>